ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world. It's time to experience the O on the original sports podcast. Fellas, fellas, fellas. Hey, happy 4th of July to you all. Uh, freedom, independence, fireworks, hot dogs, apple pie. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. Fire on this episode, we're going to celebrate our nation's official freedom from Britain's rule. Well, over 200 years ago, at least. Um, we're going to talk about a whole rack of stuff that's going on in sports over the last few weeks. Last week's episode was all about the uh, CEO of the PLL Premier Lacrosse League. Hopefully people caught that. Um, it was great that Mike was able to take some time out of his schedule and, and sit down and talk with uh, T. Sis and I. So um, what's that I hear? Oh, that's a can. Oh, Sis, was that you opening a can? No. Oh, someone's ready to start this thing. Let's get this rolling. Let's get. <laughs> you still in Florida, though? Yeah, it's about happy hour here. You know, the villages, Central Florida, they got the two for one special at five o'clock. Let's get this ball rolling. Did, did the old folks the, down uh, there. Yeah. yeah. Right? Is that like the old folks down there? Yeah, I just had lunch with some of them. And they said, this is a golf cart community with a drinking problem. Oh, you know we are. This I said, I'm in the right cart. place. I'm the right golf. place. <laughs> Hell yeah. Mikey, you know we are. You know we are. My, Mikey, you want to kick off the spontaneous? Ho yeah, but hold on. You know what is something else more spontaneous? It just dawned on me. Uh-oh. With our intro, has all the sports we love except football. <laughs> when you rewatch our intro, it has soccer, it has hockey, some baseball. No. It does not have our steel any football. Imagine that. Kennedy See, I'm broken a bar. I'm a Kennedy I'm a broken detective. bar. That's my girl at school, and she made that for us. Come on, Listen, I'm a detective. I'm like one episode of Matlock away from my law, law degree. So oh, you don't shit. get nothing by me. You don't get nothing by me. Uh, one, one episode of Matlock, and that's it. All right, fellas, right here, here we go as we get ready for this 4th of July. Real quick, as we start before we, we get into it. No, we'll get in that menus a little bit later. So my spontaneous was, what, a couple week week or two ago, your boy Reggie Jackson. We yeah. haven't, we all saw it, but we didn't speak on it. When he broke it down, his, how he lived it. You yeah. know, everybody else, and a lot of us were looking at it as honoring and wanted to bring up good memories and how it all started, how it all began. He gave us a reality check quick, fast, and in a hurry without, what, what, without question. What was your reaction, everyone, to that? And I'd like Sheen to go last because he was there. He was in the building, so to speak. So I'd like to know how, what the atmosphere was like after it was all said and done. So what were, what were your takes on it, fellas? My take, like you say, Chops, we're going to keep it 100. And he did. He didn't come out and sugarcoat it. He did not say, well, we're here to honor whatever. He said, uh, I, I was almost in a tree because I was about to kick someone's yeah. ass. And he kept it real. And I appreciate it. You know, like we do on the show here, we keep it yeah. real. And when he, he, when he, heart. When he, he didn't he didn't say the N-word. When he said it in different – that's when you knew, yo, he – and I'm, and I'm glad – Nobody turned his mic off and let him yeah. have that moment. Because, again, regardless of how many strides we need to – fellas, real quick, think about this. Whenever you see a pitcher go back to – real quick, in Boston, when they had the busing situation, there's a picture of a high school student taking a flag and trying to – do with the American flag, trying to stab a black lawyer. It's in black and white. A lot of times when they show you Martin Luther King, they show you in black and white. And they do that because it makes you think of an old time, an old, old time. But that's not that long ago. When you think about it, when you start to see a picture that's in black and white, you always think it's old. That's why they don't want to show those pictures in color. And to me, that was what Reggie Jackson did. He he put that in color. He brought Up it to light. And, and I, yes. I like how A-Rod asked the question, I think. Yeah. He, he thought he was throwing him a softball thinking – Oh, uh, we're gonna get some whatever. He, did. he just, he just, bam. Yeah, he, he did. didn't know. He was like, "Oh, thanks for sharing." He didn't know what yeah. to how to respond. What yeah. you got, Barbara? Uh, you know, it, it almost brought me to tears listening to that story. Like, I, I hate. 
it bothers me treat, you know, because of the color of your skin, you get treated differently. That, that really bugs me. It bugs the shit out of me. You guys know me well enough to know what the kind of person I am. And, and I have a rough exterior a lot of the time, but that really Ooh. bothers me. Like I wasn't raised like that. And, and you know, my, my grandmother was a, a kind, loving person. My parents, my, all my relatives, it, I wasn't raised like that. And that hurts me to see another human being get treated like, like garbage. And it wasn't called for, and it never should be called for. And to continue to talk about it in 2024 is, is painful to me. Like it's really painful to me to, to have that discussion, to listen to Nate talk uh, on our show a few weeks ago, you know, coach Luke, he's, he's a very uh, emotional guy as well. And, to see the emotion in his face, I, and I know him, and we've had these candid conversations when he taught with me in his classroom. It, it bothers me. It, it does. I, I have a hard time with that. I'm glad Reggie put his cards on the table. He didn't sugarcoat anything. I'm glad everybody sat there and listened to what he had to say. You could see a look in their eyes like, man, you know, no, nobody yeah. should ever have to deal with anything like that ever. But it doesn't change it yet. You know, well, we still keep on fighting that fight. And, and, and you're right. But I think I don't have children, but you guys do. By the time your little ones are our age, hopefully they will see a significant difference. And I say that because they're growing up in a, a completely different world where now, you know, people see some racism, they see sexism, whatever. They'll speak out on it. Where when we were growing up, our grandparents were growing up, some of them might have known it was wrong, but the mass still control thing. So I, I, I'm a firm believer. It's not going to be eradicated, but I do believe by the time your children are grown, and I say 40s, 50s, whatever have you, I think they will see significant strides. But I, I do. I want to hear from Sheen. He was in, <laughs> in the park after Reggie says this. So for me... Um... Earlier that week before the game, we went to the museum. There was a Negro League Baseball Museum. I didn't know Reggie had played there. He played for the Birmingham A's, of course. So I didn't, I was just I was like, wow, Reggie played here. Of course, Bo Jackson, those guys played. But um I ran I actually ran into him before that. Like just just in crossing, kind of I said, Hey, how you doing, Mr. Jackson? And he seemed like he was kind of angry or in a hurry. So he just pew. but um I think some people were shocked that he said it. Some people were happy he said it. Uh, and some people were just like, hey, it's Reggie. Reggie does what Reggie does. That's just how Reggie is. Reggie doesn't – we all – I mean, if you've seen, the, if you've seen his documentary, he, just, he, he never really ha, he never really um, sugarcoats anything. You know, if it, if it needs to be said, Reggie says it. He was always like that, though. He, I, I don't know if right. you guys remember when you were yeah. kids – uh -huh. uh, watching him play baseball, he was always a straight shooter. Yeah, and, and right. part of part of that is was he outspoken growing up. Yeah, yeah he, he was. was. Yeah, he, he said what. It, yeah, yeah, but that's the reason he was outspoken is he got a platform once he became a well-known <clears throat> player, and he used his platform to say what he needed to based on the things that he talked about in that video a few weeks back. I mean, it just here's real, real quick. Here's here's my problem. I saw it in the way. Sizzle answered. I saw it in the way you answered, Barbara. It hit you. It was like, damn, I never knew. I never knew. You didn't experience, but you can uh, you can feel that other people have and what they go through. But when she – go ahead, Gene. I can tell you also, I went to the Civil Rights Museum down there. There was a out, Ku Klux Klan outfit in the, in the glass, of course. And guess what year it was? 1990. Oh, I was going to yeah. say 1998. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, and see how Sheen said some of the people brushed it off as that's Reggie being Reggie. Some people were shocked. That bothers me on the aspect of, again, they weren't listening to the message. Right. Yes. You know what I mean? If you want to be shocked that he said he he said <laughs> it the whole entire he, – he said nigger on TV, be shocked because you expected to hear the N-word. Then get past it and realize and listen with the man. He's a pro athlete. One of the best of what he was doing at the time. And they were telling him flat out, you can't eat here. Right. You know what I mean? And that's what, and it bothers me that people were shocked or put it off as, well, that's just Reggie being Reggie. No, this man was trying to drop history. And the crazy part is, fellas, 
I don't care what it is. I don't care if you speak to a military veteran, a sports veteran older. The, the greatest stories you'll get is from someone who lived in a time that we can't fathom. Even if you speak to someone who played in the 70s Steelers and just some of the stories they could tell you amongst players, fishing trips, what happened in the locker room, shit that we never fathom. And it doesn't even have to be about race and religion or whatever, just some of the stories that players couldn't tell. Now, I'd lo- I love listening at the feet of anyone older because that's that's a true right. education right there. It is. I mean, I just go back and he said it. I wasn't shocked he said it. I, I was, like I said, I was glad he brought light to it and appreciated it. I was, I was like, I thought it was powerful. Yeah, it was powerful. Just you, just you. think back a few years ago. Now we don't know what the real story is, but Mason Rudolph with Miles Garrett. Yeah, and what Miles Garrett said he said, you know. Here's the thing. And, but I don't. I, I, I don't know the truth there because I'm not in that thing. locker room. I don't know what the I, hell goes on there. I find it hard to believe. <sighs> If Mason said that, and I'm not being a homer or stealer homer, if Mason said that, and neither Pouncey or any of the O linemen or any of the other black players players checked him in the locker room, because we'd have heard about it. Right. Even when Ru- Cooper yeah, Riley said it for the Eagles, he got checked in the Phillies locker room, and that was during right. the offseason. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't. I, I, so that one, I, I'm don't, not. I don't. I, I'm not saying he didn't say it, but I find it hard to believe he said it. Right? There. I find yeah. it hard to believe. That's me. Yeah. But I mean, that's just an example. And if and if if Miles Garrett used his status to cast a a dark shadow over racism based on that situation, shame on him. You're right. But think about this: the worst thing you can do is swing a helmet. Worst, seriously, on the field, the worst thing you can do is someone to swing a helmet. You can hurt someone swinging a helmet. So, what's so think about this: no matter how much trouble I'm in, if I'm retaliating. If I claim the race card or I claim homophobia or if, if a woman would claim you rape me, whatever have you, that'll change the story from what I did real quick and fast in a hurry. I'm, and yeah. I'm just, again, and I think that's what it was. Because yeah, man. That's kind of the always the go to when something like that kind of happens. That they, they, that's come on. Yeah, that's we do that I, with our I, government. I, when yeah, we know yeah, something's yeah, coming yeah. down the road, they, they 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 throw something else out there that. Yeah, yeah. The we don't want to get too. In. We don't want to get deep into it. With your scissors, with your real quick. Oh, hey, uh, last there's so many I could throw out there, but this was something I thought was really interesting. There's 34 players in NHL history who made it to Stanley Cup at least five times and lost four of them. And last night, Corey Perry joined that elite club, if you will. <laughs> Not he's probably not proud of it, but he was on the Edmonton Oilers. They obviously lost last night. Last year, uh, or, uh, he was with Tampa for what two years? They lost. Uh, or no, he was on Montreal and Dallas when they played Tampa, and he lost. So he goes to Tampa. What's Tampa do in the finals? They lose. Blue. So he's lost four. Uh, I think out of the last five years in the Stanley cup. And uh, I almost feel like he's, he's like the modern day Buffalo bills. <clears throat> what do you guys think about this? How old is Perry? 39 years old. Okay. I'm okay. But and again, real, real quick, more impressive to see a 39 year old hockey player, 38, 39 year old basketball player, like LeBron 30, 49, 40 year old player in NBA, in the NFL, which is more impressive. Say that again. I'm sorry. More impressive. A 39-year-old in the NHL, a 39-year-old in NBA, or a 39, 40-year-old in the NFL? Well, I, can it I go? It on position, too. That's what I'm about to say, too. And I also think, what a line, right, Mark? Because yeah. if he's on the fourth line, he's not playing. No. As, okay. He's getting minimal minutes. Generally, that's where he is. The center is usually an older guy who could win the face off, or he's, yeah. I mean, he's, so not, he, he's a big enough guy that he parked in front of the net and caused a lot of confusion for power plays. That's what his role was. Um, well, he, brought, he brought veteran leadership into the locker room uh, experience that, you know, you need from a guy who's made that long, deep run. So he can tell those guys, hey, here's what you expect. Here's what happens with this game seven. Here's what's, you know, this is what you need to think about. This is where you need to be. You know, he, his role is. 
bringing a 39 year old guy on the team isn't always the worst thing, but to expect anything other than what you get out of him in his role is just what? asking for too much. The average hockey line is it even a minute or is it less than a minute? How long it's are about, they on? It's just about 45 seconds, 30 Okay, to so that's for, the young, that's for the young guys. When you're an NBA, you can determine you to, to me, it was more impressive that he's 39 playing hockey. And I say that because once you're on the ice, everybody's fair game to get hit. Every, everybody can get hit, whatever, and you got to move, whatever have you. Quarterback in the NFL, they protect you. Braun, you can sit out or I'll just stay away from the ball. I don't have to go in the paint. I thought it was more impressive that he was 39 playing in the NHL. Only because, again, even the young guys are still maybe going 45 seconds to a minute on a line. I understand he might not be getting a lot of time. But to me, that to me that was most impressive because anybody can catch a body check or a hip check in hockey. You may hey, not get as many as certain, but I, I thought it was I thought it was most impressive. Most impressive him. these days for me is forty nine waking up with no kinks and crooks in the back and not sore like I just got beat up over at night in my dreams or something. Yeah, there you go. He's working out, but that yeah. is impressive. You know, chops. There's been guys as old as forty two playing in the NHL. You know, I, I mean, it's it's. It's a it's a different. Most guys have a different mentality, and, and most of those guys are Canadian and, and yeah. they're raised differently. This is their game. Last night, T says, or the other night when we were watching the finals a couple of nights ago, uh, a week ago, whatever. Uh, T says is putting out there the amount of viewers for the NBA finals, the amount of viewers for the NHL finals. You can't compare those because my question in our text group was, how many people in Canada are watching this shit? Every oh. person in Canada was tuned into that game. That's oh. millions and millions well, of people. Well, my thing was my, my thing was this. Now I'd like to know. Well, it's all started out real quick. It, it started out as what was the what, what was the question you asked, Barber? The most no, you said hockey had the best playoffs. Is right. that yeah? I believe definitely. That's what you said. Right. Now here's my thing. The we all know the best words in sports, game seven, because that's all or nothing. That's all or nothing. So if it's all or nothing, I love the play mat, the, the playoff format in football because it's it's win or go or when you go on a loss, you go home. I love March Madness. I don't know if anything beats March Madness. But, fellas, overall, man, baseball playoffs and World Series is hard to beat because on any pit – in hockey, you got ebbs and flows. You know, we can feel this little momentum, this, that, whatever. And you can – but, man, with any pitch in baseball – in the playoffs, and I honestly I don't watch much baseball until playoffs. I so it's hard for me to say, but I, I do that may had me think last night. I wasn't so quick to say yes like you and Sheen, but that that'd be an interesting. I'd I'd like to put that on our on on our Facebook post on our post. Let fans vote on that. What do they think? We can do that. We can do that. Hey, here's the thing about baseball and and hockey. Baseball can trot a guy out who pitched the day before just to throw three outs if he's the best pitcher on the staff to put it away. In hockey, every guy on that bench is playing every game unless he gets hurt. You know, your top goalie is seeing every shot unless he gets hurt. It's, You're right. And, and it's physical and it's fast. I mean, it just – there's the if you have not been to a hockey game, whether it's a regular yeah. season game or a, a playoff game or a game seven – you're missing yeah. out. That's all I'm going to say. You're missing out. It's just, it it's just a different animal. I, I'm not sure why hockey isn't quite as popular as it could be, because well, we all like fast. We all like physical, right? We we all love those things. Honestly, fellas, go. I'm sorry, Mark. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I was, sorry. You know, Batman does a lousy job of marketing the game. ESPN picked them back up. What last year? They've done a really poor job of putting the games out there and, and hyping people up to watch the games. I mean, you know, and there was always this philosophy that I heard from people, you know, when we'd have this discussion, why is it hockey is, is popular? Why can't it be as popular as, as football? Because it brings every element and more speed and more physicality, to be honest. Every guy hits in a hockey game, but not every guy hits in a football game, okay? But they said it's about the betting thing. They, they they pointed out to me. They said it's about the betting. How, how do you bet on hockey? Well, you know, also it, it's sort of different because a lot of just being honest with you, just like boxers, 
a lot of football players, some of the best football players came from lower poverty f- f- families, whatever have you, just being honest with you. So they couldn't afford to play hockey growing up, number like, one. Like baseball. Yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, tra- and traveling, whatever have you. Now, years ago, more black people played baseball in minorities than are now because they didn't have the traveling teams back then. So right. they could just go sign up at their local. But just like ho- soccer, hockey, hockey, Canada, soccer, and other countries – they're not big here in the United States. I I don't think just because we didn't play it as kids. And I say even soccer, they're trying to now have a great soccer, you know, and a soccer program. But I don't my thing for hockey is I think it was an expensive sport to play. It, it really yeah. was. It still is. But, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. and I think that's why it hasn't it gone on. No, and number two, trying to learn it as an adult offsides, uh high sticking. You know, different penalties. I think it's a lot for people to learn. I, 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 okay. honestly, I think that's why, you know, now I, Grant Fuhrer is what got me in it. So I'm playing hockey and I'm going to the deck or I'm going street hockey. Nobody looked like me playing it. Nobody. I was saying, you don't play deck hockey back in the day? Yeah. You know, up at the court, the tennis court, you know? Yes. Anywhere there's open space, we play deck hockey. Wow. Yeah, man. A lot of fun. It's interesting you talked about Grant Fuhrer because uh, the hockey podcast I was on. Uh, last week we talked about uh, minorities in hockey. We talked about Willie O'Ree. Uh, we talked about um, you know the LGBTQ plus community in, in sports. Um, and when I came on the show, because I came on a little bit into what was going on, I had anyway. Um, he asked me first thing, point blank, what minority jumps off the page at you as soon as you think of uh, hockey? And I said Grant Fuhrer. Because we've been doing, yeah. Now, but see, now, like your sons and your children, in a few years, theirs may be because they see him so much now. Suban, you know what I mean? Because he's on a lot. Because Grant Fuhrer wasn't on TV as in doing interviews like Suban is, but Grant Fuhrer was a hell of a goalie. That's what you know what I mean. Mark, where is Popeye Jones's son now? Oh, you know? he plays for. Uh, you know, you Nashville, know either Nashville or Columbus. I can't remember. He got traded from one to the other. Okay. He got. He's supposed to be pretty good at some. He's point. very good defenseman. Okay. Very, very, very good. good. Did there you know are that a lot tops, of Popeye are, Jones. Wow. Well, yeah. I'm not. Black yeah. Hockey, remember, there are a lot of good black mm-hmm. athletes uh, playing hockey today. You know, I mean, the, the Penguins have P.O. Joseph. He's yeah. a fantastic skater. His brother now, plays up in Ottawa. You know, yeah. I mean, I could I could list ten guys to you that are fantastic hockey players that are, that are black hockey players. We know about Jackie Robinson and what he had to go through. Could you just imagine, just being honest, fellas, what the first black person ever played hockey? Willie had to O'Ree. Go through? Willie well, O'Ree. They, I mean, it, it man, per, I just could, couldn't imagine what he had to go through. But yeah. you know, but that, that hey, that, hit us up with your next one. Yeah, who we got? Sheen Barber. Who we got? Oh, it's me. Uh, <laughs> Vine is all about the hot dog eating contest. Did you know, that go I, down? Went the, I went the Fourth of July route, fellas. Uh, who was it? Uh, Kobayashi? No, Kobayashi. Yeah, man. Yeah, but one of the two. It's either him or Joey Chestnut. They said no more, man. Uh, he oh, Joey himself. Chestnut. Joey Chestnut. Yeah, he, he, said, he they said no. You ain't doing it because you're eating somebody else's hot dogs. Yes, but the crazy uh, part is he's uh, and crazy, and he's with Impossible Meat. Impossible. That's who it is. It's not even real. But nobody else has signed him. How can you? What do you mean? Me, You're not letting him compete this year? No, no not in the hot dog eating contest. But why not? But he, but he and Kobayashi are doing it on their own. Just them two. Kobayashi is. I don't know their ages. I think Chestnut is late thirties, mid to late thirties. Don't know how old Kobayashi is, but he's past his prime. He's past his prime, fellas. I don't know. It was a documentary I've watched years ago. Crazy Lakes Conti, uh, Eater X, The Black Widow. Uh, there's all kinds. Isn't of, she a pool player though? Well, she is, and there's also a, a eater, fellas. I, I know it's a, if you were to look at some of their records. One dude, I can't. Michael Constant, I can't think of his name. He ate like seven pounds of butter in three minutes. Ooh, yes. Some of the some of the records they have in eating is crazy. And would you guys like to attempt? Maybe not, of course, Nathan's. Even if it was something local, would you like to try the hot dog eating contest? No, no. I don't like hot dogs like that. 
ten well, minutes. Even, you, <laughs> even, even if it was chicken, I even if you. it was chicken tenders, how about chicken wings? I could fellas, punish some wings. Yeah, you say that you have no, fellas. When I watch this documentary on these guys, what they do to actually train, oh, actually yeah. train forties, it's ridiculous. Hey, it's I just crazy. got three plates of salad at the Ruby Tuesday Salad Bar. I'm full. Should and they say they because lettuce stretches the stomach. I'm like, what, <laughs> fellas? If you can ever with water. read up a document documentary and find out about these eaters, it's crazy. And the crazy thing is, none of the best ones are big guys. None of them are big guys. Hey, I, I got to tell you a quick story. Then there was this guy that used to coach with me. His name was Mike Denny. Uh, Rasheen and Terry both know Mike Denny. Mike Denny, food, he's one of the craziest son of bitches I ever met. Chops, you'd love this guy. He played football in Delaware. Uh, so the first <laughs> night ever he was on my staff at Rockville, the first night we ever had workouts, we stopped at this place uh, that was having a wing night. And um, we got something to eat. I offered to buy him a beer. He, he doesn't drink because he used to drink heavy and he, he just blew a joint up and, and he stopped drinking after that. He just like went crazy. Anyway, I said, what do you, what are you getting to eat? He said, Oh, it's wing night here. Let me get 50 wings. I said, oh, are we going to share those? You know, what are we going to do? He's like, no, no, those are my wings. Dude ate 50 wings. Dude yeah. ate 50 wings. Denny ate 50 are wings. You, is he, how big is he? He's probably like 6'2", 220. Jeez. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. And this is a guy who, like, his body was his temple. You know, he'd eat tuna fish before he went to bed. He taught us all about psyllium husk and how it – you know how that cleanses your your system. Like he, he, his body is a temple. But boy, when he would eat, man, wow. he would eat fifty wings. I never saw anything like it. I'm sitting there. I'm like, God dang. You know, here I am getting like fifteen of them. And he's pounding fifty down. That's like crazy. Tea. That's crazy. Besides <laughs> wings, what could one of you guys eat a whole shit ton of? Honestly, yeah, Swedish yeah. meatballs. Sweet. I do that's a lie. I don't even have to be meat Swedish meatballs. Love them. Swedish oh. meatballs. I used to love going to Sons Italy and whatever their meatball meatballs. Oh. Oh, love shit. them. Love yeah. them. The Sons. Let's move on. Miss oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, BB has here used to make her pork, beef, and oh geez, a loo. The pork in the veal, the veal, the pork. Oh, the yeah, right. making, Shrimp, Shrimps Shrimps with Old Bay. Oh, yeah. shrimps with all day, man. That's what shrimp you could crush. Store, the shrimp store called and yeah. said they're running out of shrimp. They want because <laughs> can't stand you. Yeah, the I ocean still call. And said I they're running out of shrimp though. sizzle. Yeah, get that. Get that uh, joke right. What you I'm got sorry. on your spontaneous combustions? Hey, Pickens, can he be a number one? Will he be a number one? George? Yes. You think he'll be number two on the stage? It, it ties in. Can he be a number one? Will he be a number one? I say right yes. Now, I think he's. Both. I think right now he's so slated to be the so number one. You're saying one. he's number. He'll be a number one by default. Hold on. Are we? You talking num the number one receiver for the Steelers? Yes. So we're looking for number two. Yes. Yes. Hell listen, yeah. dude, okay. So so let me let me let you know. They they say there's about 30, 30 more million mark that they got to play with, right? Yeah. So do you think they're gonna go get a receiver? And if they do, will he? Will Pickens be the number one? Here's it. They're not going to get a number one. Okay. Fellas, unless you're getting Justin Jefferson, unless you're getting Chase. Okay. Who else are you – seriously, talent-wise, who, who, yeah. who could be number – who would be Pickens out? Are you Pick saying also is he capable of being number one on the Steelers or capable of being a number one in the league like a Justin Jefferson – or the likes of those guys who All of that, are because listen to, to me the number one should be able to run tree yes or no Mark yeah I agree hundred okay. percent and he don't run tree what, can he run tree hold on he'll get better let's 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 keep it a buck though I don't think the Steelers wide receiver core has ever had proper tutelage because we've we've had great receivers that hold on. Even AB was a hell of a talent, but you didn't say he was a great route runner. You did. I see. I didn't think Ooh. AB was a great route runner. Oh, he yeah. was hard nosed. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me oh, tell you some stops. 
Hold on, let me tell you. Let me tell you why he was a great route runner, chops. Because he ran a four six forty. There's no way you're getting open if you're not running great routes like that. He, hold, he hold wasn't on. a blazer. But Steve Largent wasn't fast. But Steve Largent was a great route runner. That's always open, and he can catch. So to me, once you're disciplined, seven eight boom, seven and six your curl. I, I don't know, man. I I think Pickens gets his got to get his head on right because he had problems at Georgia with his attitude. That's he showed a little bit, nah, a little bit of problems here in, in Pittsburgh. But I think he gets his head on right. Talent wise, whew, fellas, you put his, you put his name to me. I hey, I know I'm going to come off like a homer. Talent wise, you put his name in a bag with Chase, with Jefferson, and any three of those ones you pick, I'll take any one as my number one. I think okay. talent wise, he's like that. Yeah. He's got think to be is young. What do you think he'd do if Mahomes is thrown to him? Oh my! What wouldn't he do? Same thing Randy Moss did. <laughs> Put that hand up, and that's it. Yeah, he touches. He can't. fellas. If he touches it, he catches it nine times out of ten. Yes. Yeah, okay. man. He got. He got to hold yeah, his emotions yeah. in check. I think yes. his big we're, deficiency is holding his emotions in check. He needs to grow up. He's yeah. going to be tw- – he's 24, turning 25, I believe, this year. I wonder how much Deontay Johnson helped with that temper tantrum. I can't say was, much because Deontay he Johnson wasn't happy. Won. And so sure. I think uh, Pickens was feeding off of that. Yeah. But now, <laughs> hey, I clean, mean, I, clean new year, new quarterbacks, clean slate. You number one, show us. Well, here's Deontay, the thing. Deontay also could run tree, but go ahead. He yeah, could. I don't want to put You're that right. really on Deontay because Pickens had a bad attitude at Georgia even before Deontay was in the picture. So I don't want to put that all on Johnson. But here's the thing is you're talking about now he will have a quarterback, whether it's Russ as a veteran who's been there, won a Super Bowl, or you're going to have Fields if he ends up starting who realize he needs to prove things to people, I can play. You have Warren who's a young back. However, he is a workhorse. You have all those guys on defense. This team is ready. If Pickens doesn't show up and show out from day one, he's going to hear it in the locker room. There's too many leaders at every position or guys that work hard at certain positions. He's not going to be able to lag this year. Not going to be able to. One of the things I want them to stop talking about, though, is going out and getting a primetime receiver like Brandon Ayuk. They are not going to do that. They they can they can you, the me the media is just building that up. Because, Mark, you know what, Barbara, I was like that until they pulled the trigger. On I understand Field that in Wilson. I, I, I understand was. that, but you know what? At the end of the day, they're not going to be able to pay Brandon Ayuk thirty million dollars and George Pickin thirty million dollars. Right, and, 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 the, and, the, and the Wilson pickup was for pennies on a the dollar. They got a yeah, they got a but still that. yeah, but still. Denver's still paying the ball for that contract. Ayuk to me. The same reason we had gotten into it, the 49ers offense is loaded. So, Ayuk, they take you out. They're still loaded at running back, tight end, and another wide receiver. It is by a receiver in. You know what I mean? So, Ayuk, I don't – you think that you put up great numbers and you're worth this, and you're supposed to think that. But we have to realize what you've come from. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and, and I get – if you want to go out and get a number two, get a number two. But to me, Sheen brought it up, which now got me thinking it got the wheels moving – but I just assume no matter who you bring in is going to be number two. I just have Pickens as number That's one. That's what I'm saying, that too. I you know, if you bring in Cortland Sutton, someone like that, they're going to be number two. You, yeah. You're more at well, – what you need to do is bring in a guy who has some fil- familiarity with this new receivers coach. Cortland Sutton, he, he makes sense because oh. that's where this receivers coach came from. Gotcha. You know, I, I mean – Honestly, number two right now, if you want to know the truth, is Fryermuth. Well, he's he's he, healthy. Yeah, that's the big question yeah. mark. But will he get a contract quick, before camp? Real, that's real quick, the big Barbara, question mark. And, and stay with me. Not for a little pushback on that. Seeing that we have a new O coordinator, new quarterbacks, everybody's learning a new position. Not excuse me. Everybody's learning a new offense. So regardless of what receiver you bring in to be number two, they're all learning something new. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, yeah. I do agree with you much on Fryermuth being number two if he can stay healthy or whoever the tight end is going to be, and possibly the slot, only because with Arthur Smith's run, run, run first offense, I think those little dink and dunks to a tight end or a crossing route on your slot will be good. But once you put eight guys in the box, I think Pickens can show out this year, fellas. I, I really do. I, I, I'm, I'm excited, and I think he is number one. To answer your question, Dr- Shane, yes, he can be Steelers number one. 
Yes, he should be number one, and he should be a pro bowler this year. Pro bowler, if not a, a pro bowler. All right. Interesting. Height. Interesting. Oh, I'm, ready. Fellas, yeah, I'm ready. A great spontaneous reaction. But let's keep it rolling. J.J. Riddick to the Lakers. Was this handpicked by LeBron? Why this happen? How this happen? Why? Why? Why is it so hard for the Lakers to get a guy to come in and coach them? They're they've got talent, right? They're a couple moves away from being, uh, you know, competitive uh, to the degree that they could make a run, right? To, to go back on the LeBron thing, I think we discussed this as far as bringing in um, the Hurley or Reddick, and then we, you know. With Hurley at Connecticut, everything runs through Hurley. You know what I mean? Now, yeah. if he went to the NBA, it would have went, went GM, uh, LeBron, and then maybe him. So I'm saying, yeah, they, I think I think LeBron did this. Oh, without question. Braun's had, a what, nine different coaches? Just yeah, keep it a buck. He's no, nine yeah. different coaches. No coach has lasted more than three seasons with the Lakers since Phil Jackson. And – also, with me, what I'm looking at with Sheen, or excuse me, with Reddick, from the jump, I expected him to get it. Even before they, I always, I thought they used Hurley as a smokescreen. And I say that because Hurley was king. Not Hurley. Or, yeah, Hurley was king at UConn. Had a chance to go through a three-peat. Could do whatever he wanted on the campus. Why would you leave and go to L.A.? I thought that was a smokescreen from the beginning. And the way... They had J, JJ and Braun talking about Ham on their podcast, and he gets Ham fired. Ham won a chance or took you to the Western Conference Finals last year and took you to the playoffs this year with a roster, Braun, you drew up. Let's not to mention AD, that cat is as soft as medicated cotton. He can't stay healthy for shit. Just for keeping yeah. it real. You know yeah. what I mean? So they're dangling it, him. You know that, right? Yeah. They're dangling him. Yes. JJ Reddick. You know the X's and O's, and you speak it well. You have a lifetime in the NBA and watch you guys. I get that. Being on the sideline and coaching is different. I wish the man success and well, but I they hired another coach so well, and, and he has the title, but that's that's Braun's team. Come hey, on. To me, it's time for LeBron to walk away. I bet. Look here, man. I know he had a great season. I get it. But I, I think it's, you know, like when you get this – when you get this kind of power as a player where you can pick your team, where you can pick your coach, you're, you're doing nothing but you can pick your son. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hey, hey you're you pacifying yourself. I, I just saw this, the Celtics out of spite would pick Bronny just to, just to hold him and then use him as leverage to get him traded to wherever Bron, uh, LeBron wants him to go. I, they, I mean, that They've got a strong team. Here, here's my thing, real quick, fellas. And to me, the fact that Braun plays as much as he does and is as good as he is at 39 in the NBA, to me, speaks to how the level of competition has gone down. Even when Brady, and I'm not a Brady fan, but keep it about when he won with Tampa Bay, they had a number one offense and number one defense. He didn't have to carry that team on his back, he just didn't mess up. Braun is still carrying the Lakers at 39. That hey. shows you to me the level of competition is going down. What other sport is a 39 year old dominating like that? I, I, I'd have to counter that, Chops, though. Okay. And I agree. These guys are elite, you know, and they're up in age. But you're saying the competition went down where I'm seeing a, a, a different perspective where you can't touch the quarterback. You, you, you In NBA, you can take five steps, you, you don't play defense. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're right. Backing off here defensively. You're, you're you're right. You you couldn't touch the quarterback, but let's not forget. Again, I'm not a Brady fan, but nobody gets rid of the ball faster than he does. Nobody. So I'll give Brady who when Brady comes out, he's too set. He's so Brady. I understand he's a robot, but they and they designed the offense, whatever it was, to where Brady didn't hold the ball long. But Braun is having to play offense and defense, both side of the ball, playing 30, 35 minutes a game, 38 minutes of, of a 40, and he's still dominating. And then yeah. he takes a couple weeks off. That, to me, fellas, is just – he See, does. Here, here, here's where I lost my faith in the NBA, and only this year did I, I regain some with the finals. These guys just – I'm taking the night off. I'm not playing tonight. 
I'm, I'm going to sit this out. People pay big freaking money to go to NBA games, much more than they pay to go to almost any other sport. And, and these guys are like, eh, I don't feel like playing tonight. I need to rest. That's bullshit. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's complete bullshit. Rabbit hole here. And speaking of paying big money, five years, $225 million for Scotty Barnes' rookie contract extension. Is he putting up the numbers to get that? Who's that? For Toronto. Oh, sorry. Uh, exactly. I don't know that guy. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, even I Lawrence, Lawrence, when he signed, what, oh. two weeks ago or whatever, Trevor Lawrence making that much? I mean, yeah. I, He's a I know what I think. Have any of you seen – how do you – applaud the man for getting it. If you're the front office of Jacksonville, are you – do you believe he's worth that? Obviously, or they wouldn't have paid him. No, you, yeah. not them. They do. Do you? Like, what, I'm the front office of Jacksonville. Yeah, you see, he's yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you this much: if I'm the front office of Jacksonville, my offense is different than what the hell they're running. I'm not bringing in Myers. I'm not. I'm bringing in a guy oh, that yeah. he can work with right out of the gates to make him productive. I'm bringing in a backup quarterback that's going to help him grow as a superstar because he's getting money right now from what he did at Clemson still. Yeah. 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 Well, That's he what he's getting money from. You know, I mean, he, that contract he signed has triggered inside the owners to put together a quarterback salary cap alone. Sheesh. Outside of your, right other salary cap, just a quarterback salary cap, because they feel like that's a rabbit hole that's coming down the pike here where, you know, these guys are uh, Lamar Jackson, uh, the guy we're talking about, Sean w Deshaun Watson. I mean, these guys are making 40, 50 million bucks. You can't pay anybody else on that team. What well, you're paying those guys that kind of money. You Watson can't. Stinks. Fellas, do you realize he had, he went to another team. He is in Stafford. Stafford was the first $100 million quarterback to win a Super Bowl. Then, then now, with staying with his team, now you have Mahomes. But I don't understand why GMs don't realize you're paying quarterbacks these great, huge, outrageous salaries because they lead the team. But start looking at the quarterbacks that have signed $100 million deals. They're not winning chips. They're not winning rings. So, to me, that further proves football is the ultimate team sport. But – why isn't someone being able to sit there and say, if you do all this analytics and you're studying, we're paying our quarterbacks a great amount, but we all know defense wins championships. Hell, that's what we saw. To me, that's what helped the Panthers win, their defense. The Panthers' yeah. defense against the Oilers, that's to me what helped them win the other night. You know what I'm saying? So, but well, I, I just don't get Okay, it. So, so let's get into that. We had the Stanley Cup in last week, and Rasheen and I kind of friendly fired back and forth. Um <laughs> The, the deal with that is this. The deal with that is this. The Panthers play like a team. They don't lean on one particular guy to score 130, 140, 150 points and a second guy to score over 100 points. The Panthers play like a team. They play what's called a 200-foot game, essentially. The, the, the defensemen don't go over the blue line unless there's a sure-fired winger who's going to come back and – recover for them and play defense. And that's what's the difference between Florida and Edmonton. And until their superstars, who are fantastic hockey players, until they start getting the guys to play that 200-foot game, it makes it really difficult for a team like Edmonton who leans on those couple of guys to win the Stanley Cup. It just does. I, I mean, there's no other way of looking at it. Yeah. Back in the day, and Rasheen threw Lemieux's name out, out at me. When Lemieux played back in the day and he got to the playoffs, maybe not so much in regular season. I see what you mean by that. But when Lemieux got to the playoffs, man, he was a 200-foot player. He he played both ends of the height. He, he would go down in the corner, get the puck, you know, help out his defenseman. I, you only got five guys on the ice at either end. Everybody right. has got to play in order for it to be successful. So Okay. You're right. He would go get the puck, but he didn't. I don't remember Lemieux being grimy with it. I don't remember Gretzky being grimy when it comes to playing defense and getting in there. They so, didn't have and, to. And do. that, yeah, you're right. There you go. And that defense, that's what I was going to say. They didn't have to. And, and fellas, and it is a different time now. 
We're on the aspect of we always had enforcers, you know, and guys that were there to protect the stars. But now when you have the the, the uh, Connor or you got Dry Seidel who are known for their offense, those guys are like, I ain't playing defense. You know what I mean? Just just on we got guys well, like that. In yeah. the and that's why they don't. We that's got true Luka. because listen, Luka can shoot the can shoot the ball all day. Luca doesn't play defense. You know what yeah, I'm saying? That, so, that's, that's why right. they didn't win. Yeah, go with, yeah. To go with what he said, if Dry Saddle, if you ain't gonna score, you might want to come play some defense. And he couldn't man work. I knew he was having a bad series, but <laughs> you used to hook up. I didn't realize he was scoreless in the entire series. The and entire, that, and that's, the entire and that's the thing cup, about that's crazy. And that's the thing not about guys like not I'm scoreless. Sorry. He had a, he had assists. He didn't have any goals. No goals. No, no goals. goals. No goals. Hey, That's how many points did uh, McDavid have the last two, last two games? Zero. But he Nothing. had forty. He had forty-two in the whole playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes but, you play soft teams and you can rack them up. But you're. But I'm sorry. So sometimes you play some soft teams. There's a lot of teams in the playoffs. All you can do is play who's in front of you. And uh, listen, no, in that in that instance, Chops, he's right because. One thing about Mario Lemieux was when them lights came on in the playoffs, <laughs> it, it was going. Yeah, it was going. and if you put a soft team in front of them, I'm going to rack up and get points. Oh, it but, didn't matter Mark, for Mario. Mark, Mark, you had – Pulling. You sort of got upset that he won – what was it, the Conn Smythe? The, the I, was, I was furious. But, here, but hold on. But here's the thing, Barbara, here's the thing. It goes for the most outstanding player in the entire playoffs. And when you think about it, what Gretzky twice and Lemieux are the only guys who had more points than him in an entire series. Fellas, Gretzky and Lemieux, that's Mount Rushmore of hockey. How do you give it to anybody else? I know we'd like to see it for someone on a winning team, but if you go the entire series, I know we played some tough teams, but let's go back to what. Let's go back to what Rasheen was saying, though. Let, let's take a small step back. You, you got Rasheen it. was talking about how when the lights went on, nothing was slowing Mario down. Okay? Those guys <laughs> played during a time that you would get grabbed, punched, yeah. pulled in open ice, and there were no penalties. McDavid's not dealing with that. He does not deal with that. No, he, he doesn't don't. put himself in a situation to get hit, Mm-mm. let alone get grabbed or pulled down. I mean, it's insane – but, but, but that's the, that's it, the air. Uh, I now, think he's a very, awkward. very talented young man. Okay. He's 27 like, years old. Sorry, guy. I, I was going to say, I think he's a very talented young man. He's 27 years old. He's done amazing things on the offensive side of it. But before he figures out how he's going to get a cup, he needs to learn to play both ends of the ice in order to produce for other people. So Hockey is a team game, my man. It's a team. It, game. it is. It is between you're, hockey you're and football. Saying he's not putting himself. You're saying he's Go not ahead. putting himself in that position to uh, challenge himself. Is that like Rasheen's uh, favorite running back, uh, Franco Harris, just run out of bounds? Is yeah, that like kind of. Running backs just run out of bounds. Yeah, you're saying they're of. not. Yeah. they're not sticking their nose in. They're not grinding. They're not getting that extra yard. Bar, bar, kind of. Barbara, let me ask you, let me ask you this. Say Drysaito has two goals yesterday. He he's in, he didn't score a goal all series, but say he has he has a goal in one in the final in game seven. Say he, he has two. Now they win the series. You forget that he didn't score anything else. You study the game, but do you think their lack of defense or their lack of playing the defense comes into play had they won the cup? Because if he'd have gotten any help and even games one through three, they it might be a different story. But Dreisaitl was not – he wasn't even there. If he can get at least two goals, three goals, somewhere in the series, that changes everything. Where's Are Nugent we, Hopkins? What's that? I'm sorry? Where, where's Where's Nugent Hopkins? That's, he that's was a, a, he yeah. was a number one overall Nugent pick. Hopkins. Where was he? He was yeah. he was. But that's invisible. what I'm saying. If, if these you know. guys show up, do you still question the lack of defense that the Edmonton played or those two I guys think, played? I think Edmonton's system – I think their system needs to be changed. And until they change their system, that they have guys that are going to play the length of the ice and create. If you listen to the announcers, I, I, I don't remember which one it was. It might have been Subban. It might have been Messia. I can't remember. This is the second or third game. I was, you know, I watched this. I, this is a lot of Stanley Cup I watch. I don't, I usually shut it out because I'm so disappointed in Pittsburgh. But anyway, 
Uh, one of those guys actually said the reason Florida was dominating at the time was because they were playing defense to create offense. They didn't care about generating shots, doing things like that. What they did was they played hardcore defense. If you watch McDavid last night, everywhere he went, somebody was on him. Somebody was on him. He wasn't getting passes and okay. able to go nearly willy. And if he spun away from one guy, there was another guy who stepped up. That just goes to show you the level of uh, the rest of their team. But, but fellas, okay, did, did Florida have anyone on their roster that was talented as McDavid or Dreisaitl? Barkov. Yeah, Barkov. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So they they have they have one. Kachuk. Kachuk. You think Kachuk's a hell of a player? Yeah, he's yeah. a hell of a player. He's a yeah. hell of a player. Pe because people don't like him because he's gritty. He's well, gritty as hell. That's what I'm saying. But he's a hell of a player. They're not. Those guys are not looked at to me, and I'm not the hardcore fan that you guys are. But when you're talking about Drysido and McDavid, they're given the score the they're the big time athlete type vibe to where there are certain players in any sport when he's grimy, he's got to work. Heinz Ward was getting his grimy. He had to work for it. He had to go get it. But you had other receivers like your Randy Mosses or whomever. They weren't considered that because they were just such better athletes. Florida was grimy and they played as a team. To me, they weren't looked at as athletic as Edmonton. And when you have guys that are athletic and then looked at as athletic, they're not playing defense. They're not sticking their nose in there. Not not always. No, not that's normal. why they didn't not win. Not, you're that's right. You're right. Win. But that's there's why a they weren't skating around with the cup. Unlike most other sports, every player on that ice has got to play. You know, pretty much the forwards have got to play both ends of the ice. If they don't play both ends of the ice, you put yourself at a disadvantage. You you really do. Yeah. I mean, I've been watching yeah. hockey yeah. since I was five years old. And I've seen an evolution of hockey. As I'm like talking today, Rasheen and I were talking about Sidney Crosby today. Sidney Crosby had 50, uh, 41 goals this year at 36 years old. And he generated a lot of goals because he is a 200-foot player still. If somebody gets behind him and is on a three-on-two break, he's busted his ass to get up there and put his body out in front of that puck so that they do not score. I think and, hockey, and that's what it takes. Hockey and basketball are – are very similar in, in regards to what you're saying. You got that man advantage. You cannot hide anybody on the ice or on the court. Baseball, put him, put his ass in right field. Football, you know, put him on, on the line or somewhere. He's going to get smoked. But you can hide guys in those two, two sports. To me, there's many more players because there's more. Exactly. Five on five, you got you go down one guy. You got that advantage. It's a lot easier to pick up a score. Hey, that was good discussion, fellas. I, I appreciate uh, uh, you letting me talk about hockey. I love hockey. You do. You, you know. Are, I, yeah. You know. You know how much I love hockey. I just, yep. I've taken a fancy to it. My uncle used to take me. My dad. My other uncle. My uncle Nino used to take us uh, every year from the time I was a little kid, five, six, seven years old, something like that. He'd take us to a Penguins game because his family on his wife's side owned a car dealership, Rivati's Automobiles, and they had tickets, and he would take us. And, wow. and from there, then yeah. when I got to high school, we used to go down to the Civic Arena. We'd sit yeah. five rows up for 15 bucks, you yeah. know, yeah, and, yeah. and, and uh, it wasn't anything start, back then. But start, start doing that. Start asking people, do you watch hockey? If they say no, ask them why. I bet you most people don't know the rules. It is fast, but if I think if they started to know the rules a little more, they would – Understand it. It's a you rules know, it's or watch yeah, it's a rules they understand it. What's and they that? can't follow the puck. Yeah. Do you remember back at like was it 20 years ago? They start putting that Blue stupid street, ass purple yeah. thing on there. Yeah. That was more confusing than actually yeah. just letting us watch yeah. the game. Get yeah. that purple stuff out of there. All right, fellas, let me ask you this real quick. And Mark had hit on it when we first started. What is on your fourth of July menu? Would like I, there's gonna be Amber. I get that. What is the one thing that you might eat it other days of the year, but you gotta have this on Fourth of July on the plate to make it feel like Fourth of July? Gotta have. I know we got the fireworks. What's on your menu? 
It's got to be corn on the cob. I was thinking the same thing. Exact same thing. It's uh, got to be. Past gotta couple be. years, we missed a couple every once in a while. We've been going up to our friends in Long Island, and my friend's mom makes this macaroni salad. It's to die for. I got to give her a <laughs> shout out. That macaroni salad. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's peach cobbler. Listen oh, I didn't know we was doing that now. That's, yeah. I said, what's on your plate? You said, okay. you said corn. Okay. I said, okay. you're, you're, That's you're, on my second plate. Now, I'm, also, real quick, fellas, I don't know what your recipe is. Get your water for your corn. Put your water in, little milk, butter. Let it boil. Let it boil, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Once there's a boil, put your corn in. Let your corn boil for 10 hard minutes. Mm -hmm. Turn it off. Put a lid on it. I don't care whether you eat it in two minutes or you eat an hour later, that corn slaps. <laughs> I'll try that out. Yeah, ooh, look, <laughs> slap, slap, man, uh, man, that man. Hey, I know Sheen like won't man, remember man. this, but do you guys remember back in the grift, back in the day, they used to oh, have God. the uh, the uh, beef sandwiches. They put that beef in that big thing, that big cooker. They'd have that celebration. They'd have um, uh, what's it? Where was it? Davisfield. They both. I mean, um, it was up by the. It was up the by wheat the field. I mean, the wheat field. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Where does it come from? I don't know. Just eat it. All right. <laughs> yeah. They used to get Rasheen. They used to get a big thing of beef, and they put it in this like, I don't know, this cooker, and it would be in there for like twenty four hours, and it, people kept guard on that shit. The firemen <laughs> were in charge of it. They kept guard <clears throat> on that thing, and, and then you got free beef sandwiches. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so nobody would mess with it. Man. Nobody would mess with it. And then the fireworks went off over my house. There'd be a racket. Yeah, 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 yeah. Down in my house. They did them at David. They did them on a the football field, didn't they? Do yeah. them on a the football. Yes, yeah, so and yep. you're yep. right there. Yep. Small yeah. town, small town living, baby. Remember yeah, ethnic days? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah they, back then, I, ethnic. Back then, remember we could buy tickets. We we couldn't buy them, but we get tickets. You got a ticket for a dollar, you get a beer. We're 12, 13 years old walking around holding beer. back then. Come on, man. They didn't get we're in the 80s. Nobody was yelling. Man, it was a they had the, and they had all in the ethnic days, they had all your booths set up. Man, eat like a man, like a rat in a cheese factory. Hey, did you ever go to Morning Sun? Huh. Down at Don Nevy. It was like some dude's house. He had a bar in it. No. You go, you go in the front door, come in the back door. It's like it was like somebody's house. It was like in the middle Speaking. of the street. A little speaking morning sun, they, they used to call it. Yeah. Liquor house, man. There was nothing like it. Yeah, but ethnic we, days. We'd hit that. We'd hit that up on uh, Fourth of July too. You know, hmm. when we was when we were young bucks. Man, when we were young bucks. Good yep. old days. Yeah, hey. that was small. That was small town living. That with that. Sizzle, what do you got for us, man? What what kind of what kind of quizzle you got for us today? Hey, when you think of America, uh, what represents in? Uh, the Fourth of July. What what symbol? Fireworks. And it, okay. And and it. But hold on. It's not just the fireworks. It's the people in the community, whether they gather at a local field or everybody on your street with their their folding chairs out on the sidewalk. Everybody watching it. That that is it to me. That that's it to me. Yes, fireworks, but it's not only the fireworks, it's how you set up to watch the fire yeah. and where. Because remember, oh. Vander Beckham, where are you watching the fireworks? Where are you watching the fireworks? It was an yeah. event, man. I yeah. Had to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I should have said, what monument represents? Oh. oh. Huh? What White monument? House? Oh. Not the White Fellas, House. I don't know why I always think of it. Oh, oh, Statue of Liberty. Yeah. yeah. So. In her left hand, she's holding a book. What date is on that book? 1776. Yep, July 4th, 1776. That's when we declared independence from Britain, England. But when did we actually get independence from 86. England? You tell us. What year? 86. Century 83. Oh, 83. I did not know that. That's interesting. Yeah. That was all. So we declared it in 76. The Treaty of Paris didn't get signed till 83. Said no more. And fellas, I, no I can't mosque. remember. I, it no. was a 4th of July. I keep looking at the picture. It's at the Lincoln Memorial where he's sitting in his chair 
and everybody's in the big pond or big whatever. That's what I think of if you're talking monument when I think of Fourth of July. I don't. I think of that before the Statue of Liberty. I know what you guys said, but mine was because I happened to see something. I think of Forrest Gump. And then oh, it was 1884 when we got the statue from France to represent that. Mark, real quick, you said you don't even like hot dogs. So were you? I mean, I like them, but I I couldn't eat them like that. Were you yeah, eating a customary eat one though on Fourth of July? He likes the glizzies. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I'll eat them for barbecue and stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it ain't like, you know, it ain't like I'm going to yourself. sheets and getting two dogs because I'm hungry. That's not happening. On your, If left to your own devices, you're barbecuing at your spot. Will oh, you yeah. put, if nobody else, if the kids don't say, Dan, let's get some barbecue, let's get some hot dogs. Do you put hot dogs on your own barbecue grill? If you're I will. Grilling I'll, up? Put like, I'll put like you six. Got, you got kids. Hey, yeah. but guess who likes the glizzies from Sheets? <laughs> who? Your boy Vaughn. <laughs> oh shit! Why does that not shock me? Vaughn. Is, you would say, but you what? I don't know when the last time you guys have been to Sheets. When I was home, was it February? Whenever it was like for the go. Olympic trials. Went to Penn State to watch the Olympic wrestling trials. On the way back, stopped at Sheets. Went in to get a Diet Mountain Dew. It was like, you got dudes like, man, I'm starving. I need MTO. I hadn't had an MTO in, I bet you, 15, 18 years. When I tell you that MTO, whoo, that's some bitch slap taste out of my mouth. Man, I bet I never taste another hamburger or bean no more. That was fire. Man, <laughs> MTO. <laughs> it's just beef, a little bit yeah. different, huh? Woo! And you it can design your own sandwich. Different. My sandwich was out of bounds. It was so. You got off at the big. next exit. It was out of bounds. <laughs> He's like, ooh. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh shit. I, was, I was putting shit on there, didn't even go. Got, I was just got the told her, from they, they, so Chops got to go. Man, oh, I said, Look here, the lady was like, Is it, You want everything on here? I said, Ma'am, the only reason I put a dead roach on it if you got it back there, I put everything on that sandwich. I put mm. everything on that Joker. It was so sloppy and so disgusting, but it was so good. Oh, yeah, right, so Michael, good. you have a little buzz awesome. going. No, I didn't. I didn't at the time. That was the Imagine only thing. Imagine if you did. Woo! It'd have been fire. Hey, look. <coughs> I lived right across the street from Sheets when I when I was at IUP. Right oh. across the street, my fraternity house. So two dogs for a dollar. Uh, that's why I don't do dogs anymore. I have too brother, many dogs. My brother, you know, he played football at IUP. The best thing was going to IUP when they scored 30, and they'd say it's a hot dog night in Indiana. They give away a free hot dog, and they were killing. That's the year they went to in championship. But also, which Mark remember, the Ninth Street Deli. Oh, yeah. They had so all. Oh, whoo. Yep. Now, it was like eating royalty those nights because it was a little bit expensive for college students, but it was well worth it. Oh, man. hell yeah. Well worth it. Hell yeah. Yeah, fellas, it was a good time. Hey, Weave, you got yep. a uh, you got a question for us today? Yeah. Hey, um, what is your favorite summer song? Summer song. Oh, mine's Will Smith. Without question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I love that song. Summer time. Yeah. Yes. I just used that song on Vincent's video from his last, wow. his last uh, baseball tournament. Yeah, I love that song. Serious chops. Okay. Yes, right. that's my joint. Do you what's like yours? Pina Colada. That's a good one. <laughs> Hot fun in the summertime. Chops. Oh, slide down that's stone. a good one. You real yeah. quick. A song that I go berserk. I sing with it every word. Scream at the top of my lungs, dancing. True story. I still do it. Matter of fact, cats. We grew up. My best friend, Jeremy Lackey, his sister Jackie Malacky from hometown, just called me last week, Saturday night. She was in Columbus, Ohio. Somebody played Miley Cyrus "Party in the USA." That oh, is my Lord. jam. If that comes on right now, I'm screaming. Top of my lungs. I'm screaming. That's my joint, dog. Wrap Miley this Cyrus. Up. That's Wrap my this joint. Show up, please. Hey, That's on that joint. note, let's share out uh, our social media and call it a day on, on our 4th of July show. <laughs> Sheen, let's start with you. Go ahead now. Sheen Hill everywhere. Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. One T Youngie. Oh my God! Look one T, so one T, Yogi Chops, break it down for us. Come on, you know me on my on my government name on 
the uh, Facebook, Michael Gregory Mills. You can find me on the gram, Big Chop 79. You can find me on Twitter, Izzy Izzy, on the Twizzies at The Real Big Chops. Holla at your boy. Hey, check us out on our website, podpage.com, original sports podcast with Mark Maraday. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok at Original Sports Podcast. Um, we're on Snapchat. We're on Instagram. Obviously, we got a YouTube channel that rolls hard. Uh, a shout out to our sponsors, Let's Talk Sports Network, Sideline Sports Net, um, Elite Sports and Entertainment Network. Uh, Peak One Sports is our newest network that we have been picked up by, along with Manning Media, you guys. So we've got a whole rack of stuff going on. Check us out. On Tuesday nights, our Roku show is on from 9 to 10 on ESEN. Feel free to email us at originalsportspodcast at gmail.com. Shout out to Steve Medley, who does our voice intro. Charlie Hodgson, our music guy for our intro and outro. Uh, Join us next week when we talk to Michael Vrasic from Callaway Golf. Uh, Talk about players, talk about clubs, talk about courses on the Original Sports Podcast. 